How's it going, everybody? A common question that I get on the channel through the comments is, how do I work with certain things with EvenG? And so I, I do read the comments, in case you were wondering. So um, a lot of sometimes I don't respond to them. Sometimes I do. In this particular case, this is um, kind of a tricky situation. That um, the last comment that I got was from. I believe the gentleman's name is Pascal. One moment while I pull up the comments. Um, yeah, he says basically that the CSR 1000V starts for a couple seconds and stops. How to get it to boot up. Can you make a video? Sure, I can make a video. So shout out to you, Pascal. So let's talk about this for a few minutes because this is kind of a unique use case and not as straightforward as one might think. Uh, now, I personally have access to the Im uh, images for the CSR1000V, and I am I download the QCOW2 image automatically. It says serial in the actual uh, file name, so that it's already got everything built in. I don't have to do anything special. Um, not everybody has that use case. So, a uh, couple things. You don't have to do this piece right here. Um, you can just create the directory, and the way that you would do that is you would... Um, ideally, go use FileZilla. So you would SSH into your uh, through FileZilla. What I do is right here. I actually go in and um, I would grab the file name itself. So here I've got my ISO file right there. I would grab this name and then I would create a directory based off the name. So I would copy the the CSR 1000V Universal K9 da 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 uh, dash uh, standard STD, and then um, all most of this, and then I would paste that information in there, and then I would copy the actual ISO file to that directory. Okay, that's that's the first thing. Once you've done that, then you have to go through and you have to create this little 8 gig file. So by doing this right here, you have this little 8 gig file right here. We're going to go ahead and do this. I'm also going to pull up an SSH connection. So I'm going to do a CD to forward slash OPT, unit lab add-ons, QEMU. And then underneath here, we'll do a, an LS for a list. We'll do a CD to CSR1000V dash. And then underneath here, we'll do an LS. And all I have is the ISO file. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and paste that guy in there, which is going to create an 8 gig file. So if I was to scoot this over just a little bit, that should now it's going to go create the file, do an ls again, and now we have an 8 We have the avert IOA QCAL2. Now, what I have to do is the line below this, this guy right here, let me go ahead and grab it real quick. There's a lot of info right here, and it kind of like dies out right here. What you have to do is you actually have to copy from here across all the way across and then bring the mouse back to when see how the blue comes on and off where I'm highlighting highlight all that then unhighlight it all flip that and then copy it and then what will end up happening is you'll get this little output right here so you gotta make sure that you get all of this so let me just go ahead and hit the enter key real quick make sure that I copied it all which I did so if your version of your CSR 1000 V code is different than what I've got here, which is what is pasted into that little line, you need to update this part right here. Let me get out of the way. This need this part right here needs to get updated to whatever version of code you're running. It might be 3.16, blah, 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 blah. Whatever that value is that's in there, this piece needs to get updated right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm actually going to correct this, uh, delete this bottom one. And now we're back on here. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna highlight all of that and then in the directory, uh, actually before I do that, let me go down here a little bit further. It says once, uh, what you have to do is you have to take this this file right here, this syntax, and you you paste it into the Eve console, or the, the SSH connection. In here, you right click and you paste all the information in right here, under inside of the, of the directory, so that it actually will boot to the CSR. Now. Let me talk about something before I move on. When you do this, you're gonna get this little pop-up right here, which is basically the boot up process. 
once you start seeing the press in, uh, press any key to continue, you need to press any key to continue, and then you need to arrow down till you get to the serial console, then hit enter. So let's let's do this. We're gonna go ahead and hit the enter key. It's going to hit the enter key, and then mount, uh, middle mouse button or uh, arrow down, and then do this. So now it's going to boot the operating system. So it's going to try to boot all this stuff up. Now, when we get down to here, it says it, well, it says important. Wait till CSR installs, and again, prompt press any key to continue. When it gets to this process again, hit any key and choose serial console get option again but do not hit enter uh, after you selected the serial option. But you need to enter this little se key sequence, which basically stops the CSR from booting. So we're gonna basically hang out here for a couple of moments while it runs the SHA-1 hash calculation. Once you do that, you will begin to see here in FileZilla, let me bring this down just a little bit for you guys. Let me go ahead and get out of the way. Um, we'll bring this down here and let me bring this up just a touch so you guys can see it. I'm gonna go ahead and resynchronize the file. And after this does the install, this file right here should grow. This file will go to uh, almost a couple gigs in size once it's done. So we'll just be patient and wait for this to do its thing and it'll go boot up. But once it's finished booting up and it goes through the boot up process again after the install process, really no different than if you were to take Windows operating system and install it to a new computer, right? You, you go through the boot up process, you boot to the ISO file, and then you select the disk that you want to install the operating system to. You go through that process, and then once the, the PC is going to have to reboot, but the, the hard drive, right? That's what you're basically doing. This is the second reboot. So we'll just patiently wait for that to happen. Not terribly difficult, but if you've never been through the process, okay, rebooting from hard drive. So once I get the little pop-up for the press any key to continue, we'll give that a couple seconds here. So we're gonna go in here, then we're going to arrow down, and then we're gonna press Control A, and then a C, and then type in quit. So there we have it. So now if we do a, we do an ls, we have the C, we have that there. We go back to the FileZilla and we do a quick refresh. We're at 1.68 gig, okay? Now that we're there, what we can go do now is delete the operating system because right now the vert IOA QCAL2 file, so specifically the vert IOA QCAL2 file is the actual hard drive that we need where this file right here is the ISO that we install from. We don't need that anymore. So we can actually go ahead and delete that. And then we're gonna go ahead and go to the topology behind it. We're gonna right click here, go to node, and then we will take a three uh, CSR, this guy right here. We're going to simply save it. And then we'll go ahead and power it on and get ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and power on the VM, like so. And then I'm going to grab C Secure CRT and then we'll wait a couple moments for it to start the boot up process. But now it's gonna go ahead and do the boot up. This will take some time, but the boot up will kick in and then we're gonna go through the install. We can see that we're doing, uh, we're doing the install the way we need to. So it should grab the serial uh, let's see, does it say what we're going to be grabbing from? Yeah, it should boot up to the the serial port like we said to. If it doesn't, I can, I'll show you where to check, but if it doesn't do that, I'll show you how to change that. There's, it's a one line, it's a one config command in global config. Um, and then you'll have to do a write mem and a reload, but it's fairly simple to do. But the cool thing is, is once you got this done, you can download the this file right here. So you can literally take this QCAL2 or this uh, this file right here, and let me bring this down just a little bit. You can literally copy this directory down 
to your computer and you never have to worry about going through that install process again because you've already installed it. Now you're just waiting for it to go through its steps of um, booting up and things like that. So you just had the boot up process of the VM versus the install process and then the, the boot up process. So a little less things for you to uh, wait on and things like that. So there's that. So I'm going to wait till this is done booting up and then we'll bring you guys back in here in just a moment. All right, so this, the router is now booting. So we're probably closer to 20 minutes to at this point, maybe 25 minutes with the actual, from the time that we started the process until we are now. So it's not terribly long, but um, once we get a little bit further along, you can see that the, the router is booting. And once we get a little bit further along, we'll be able to wrap up the, the process and we'll be good to go from there. But as you can see, we are just about there. And good to go. So let's just come back over here and double check the size of the file. We're sitting at just under 1.7 gig, which is pretty good. A feature packed router, that's for sure. So one thing to note, is I am actually using a newer version of CSR. I'm using the next gen versions now, 16.6 code, uh, 3.17, uh, 16.1 and 2 and so on and so forth. They only gave you basically 100 kilobits of backplane forwarding. So a, a very, very minimal amount of backplane to actually do your configuration or do your testing with. So if you actually wanted to copy a file, you weren't gonna be able to go very fast where with 16.6 and newer, you've actually got one megabit. So give you more options than that. So I'm just gonna come in here and type in no to do the initial configuration dialog, and then we'll be able to go through and uh, we're done with the process. That's basically how you install CSR 1000 V and Eve. Pretty straightforward, no, I'm sorry, not very straightforward, but once you've done it a few times, it becomes relatively easy to work with. So, and we can see that we booted up from there and if we, I hit the show run near the top here, you'll see that it says platform console serial. If you see that, then you know you've actually booted from the right console method and not the virtual terminal, which means that you would actually have to have um, a connection up and running um, through the, uh, I'm actually not sure if you would, it would work that way. I followed the Eve instructions and it worked out well. I know if you do this, uh, the virtual console inside of ESXi, you have to have the VM console up, and then you have to interact with it that, and then change it from platform console serial to uh, pl change it over to platform console serial. Here, I don't have to do that, but that's basically how you boot up a CSR 1000 V. There's other ways to do that. Um, I'm using newer versions of code, and the QCow2 file that's available has serial actually in the file name. So pay attention to that. Actually, let me, um, let's go to cisco.com real quick. We'll go to cisco, that's CBS, cisco. Cisco.com, let me go ahead and get out of the way. I'll go to software downloads, and then we'll go to browse all. We'll go to routers. We'll go to virtual routers, CSR1000V, and then I'm gonna grab iOS 60 software. And then I'll grab like 16.6, for example. It happens to be a version that I'm running. And if you look right here, you can see where it says Crypto, crypto Serial Cow 2. And you see that right there, 16.12. This is how you know that you don't need to do any of those additional steps, right? We have QCow 2 here, but with the serial, I don't have to do any. Um, any additional steps. It automatically does the serial connection for me. With this one here, I still have to go through the steps of selecting the QTOW, uh, selecting the console of serial. This one here is actually giving me the console of serial as my default option. So that's basically what I meant by that. So uh, that is it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below and I'll catch all of you in the next video.